There's one disaster that's more likely than any other that we're going to see here in the relative future. And it's something we definitely need to be paying attention to because it's affecting people right this second and it's only going to spread. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper. And today we're talking about the most likely disaster that we face here in the relative future. And we're seeing it unfold right in front of our eyes around the world right this second. And what I'm talking about is extreme poverty and desperation. It's taking its hold on the world as we speak, and we know it's only going to progress and become worse over time as this economy starts to crumble. And it's becoming a real issue here in the United States as well as in other countries around the world. Our first world countries are becoming third world countries very quickly right in front of us. And this is a big deal because preparing for the aftermath of that shift is something you need to be doing right now. And if you're worried about what the state of the world will be like with this economic situation we're dealing with and the aftermath it'll bring with it, then hit the subscribe button below because hopefully these conversations help you prepare for what is coming. And I do see this coming because there's examples of it happening right this second, which we'll discuss now. So. In October of 2020, the World Bank posted an article saying that they expected the crisis to force another 150 million people into extreme poverty by 2021. And I think that that number was probably an underestimate based on what we're seeing unfold around the world right now. But that was their estimate at that time. And still, if you just take it at face value, 150 million more people in extreme poverty is a huge burden for the economies of the world to try to save. And that is a huge issue because that many more people being listed as extremely impoverished means that many more people that become desperate and become a problem during any kind of other crisis scenario. Human Rights Watch has an article from March of 2021 that explains the disproportionate impact on low income people that this whole crisis has had. And the fact that people who are already struggling or already low income are struggling the most out of everyone else in the entire world because they already had it hard and things just became even more difficult for them, forcing them into a level of desperation that they were already at and haven't seen before. And now we're actually seeing those people act on those desperations and many examples from around the country as well as around the world. Okay. Understand that this is just the progression that things are going in. And all these numbers, all this information is being put out there for us to see, but we're not analyzing it in the same way as what we would in the sense of a giant cataclysmic event. When we see you know, underwater volcanoes erupt and create tsunamis, that creates a lot of attention and a lot of conversation about the idea of a natural disaster wiping us out. But at the end of the day, this slow progression of extreme poverty and desperation is really what you should expect. Eventually looking like some kind of demolition man scenario with people living in the sewers and eating rodents, right? So understand that grocery store shelves being empty is being reported on all over the place. And we know that the cheapest foods are the ones that are disappearing first. And those are the foods that people are having the hardest time finding. And the people who are on low income budgets can't get the stuff that they used to get before. And now a lot of you will come in and say things like, well, a lot of those people might be on welfare or have food stamps and they probably, you know, are already taken care of. Well, understand that Welfare and food stamps doesn't prevent those people from buying higher end foods or brand name foods, okay? So the, the foods that were cheaper and were store brand that are gone now were foods that people relied on that didn't have government aid and maybe were on a tight budget before and now have nowhere else to turn when it comes to making their money go as far as it can in the sense of groceries. So keep that stuff in mind because this is creating a problem for everybody. It's not just about low income, but this is the middle class as well that's struggling in the same sphere, okay? So, you know about the empty grocery store shelves, reports from all over the country, and it's all affecting the low income and the poor people hardest. We know that for a fact, that desperation level is growing, okay? Unemployment has technically improved, right? But we know that that doesn't account for the non-participants in the job market. And we know that with the great resignation being a big, push in the sense of people leaving their jobs, that there's probably a lot of people who are no longer seeking employment and are no longer getting unemployment benefits at the same time. So that number is not something we can really judge things on. This great resignation scenario has stemmed from many different things, but one of the things that I think you should pay attention to the most about it is that inflation has gotten so high and the cost of living has become so expensive that people that didn't make enough money to make ends meet have decided just to leave their job because what's the point of the additional stress and all of the hours and all the hard work when it doesn't even pay your basic necessities? They might as well just leave, get 
whatever government support they can find and then deal with the aftermath and the consequences thereafter because of the fact that they weren't making ends meet anyway. So what is the point of working so hard and grinding something that doesn't actually improve your situation? Understand that's a lot of people's scenarios. And if you're privileged enough to still have a job, still be making money, still paying your bills and everything else, keep in mind that not everybody's situation is so black and white when it comes to why these people are leaving their jobs or aren't getting work again once they have left their jobs. Now. Some people put a weird spin on this and say, well, this is a great opportunity for retired people to come back to work and get jobs. That's not the point of retirement. So good, good luck on that one, economists. Thanks for that idea, but no thanks. Anyway, moving on from there, this inflation that those low wage workers could no longer afford, which made them want to leave their jobs, is a huge deal. It limits you and I's ability to be better prepared, to get the surplus we need in the sense of preparation. And even when it comes to people who will tell you things like, well, storing food away and stockpiling stuff is just the bare minimum. You need to have ways to have continual production of calories and feed yourself and have livestock and gardens and everything else. Well, all that is true. I agree with you on that. However, that still has an investment that you have to put into place before you can just embark on those journeys, right? So being able to get a garden going still costs money or energy or time or whatever it might be. Same with getting livestock and everything else. So those investments are still necessary in order to start that program. So these are things that people might not be able to afford or might not have access to and getting that surplus material in the sense of food and whatever else your necessities might be is the best they can do right now. So keep that in mind as well when you're trying to talk about preparedness. Not everybody can invest what's needed to start the program of caloric production, okay? Now, this eviction crisis, right? It keeps getting pushed down the road. We've talked about it for a long time, but it never hit that boiling point. And there's a lot of reasons why, but we know that most renters live in urban environments and these urban environments are going to get hit the hardest when these evictions finally take place. And now one thing you can expect is that this advanced child tax credit that was being given out throughout 2021 or at least the last half of the year has expired. So a lot of people were getting hundreds of dollars every month in advanced tax credits towards their refund, you know, at the end of the year that they aren't getting any more. And that money could have easily kept them afloat or at least kept them in their apartment or in their home or whatever um, they were using it to pay for is now suddenly gone. So expect more of an impact. And whether or not you agree with these tax credits or this government um, stimulus incentive or anything else related to those kinds of things, that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, many, many people relied on that money to keep afloat and suddenly it's, it's expired now. So understand that this eviction crisis could come back around and start being a lot more aggressive than what it was before, okay? One second. Still coming off of a little bit of sickness here. Now, okay, here's some examples as to why this extreme poverty and this desperation is starting to take a hold. And these are things that you need to keep in mind and these are red flags, right? These are harbingers to let us know that these things are happening and that this is coming and that these things aren't going to just go away. They're not just going to go away. They're going to escalate and why we need to prepare for what's going on around our world right this second. Okay. We're seeing train cargo robberies happening in the Union Pacific rail uh, ways and rail um, yards in Southern California where people are stealing the cargo within the trains and they're taking Amazon packages and all kinds of mail and opening it and tossing anything aside with no value and taking anything with value away. So if you're missing packages, or you're not getting your orders. This is a big reason as to why these train robberies, which takes you back to the 1800s, um, are actually going to just keep continuing on. And when people are seeing the success happening from these robberies, people getting things that are expensive and being able to make their way with it, it'll give them the idea that this is something that maybe they should try. And this isn't being you know, taken seriously in the sense of law enforcement or anything else because all of those agencies are spread too thin already. So you can't expect for this stuff to just be taken care of by your local authorities. They can't even get on top of it already. There's no reason to assume they're gonna be able to get more of it under control anytime soon, okay? Now, smash and grab flash mobs, that's another Example as to desperation and extreme poverty starting to hit a boiling point. These things don't happen, you know, five years ago the same way as they do now. And people are just running in with large groups, smashing and grabbing everything in sight and using it as a way to fulfill their needs. And whether or not they're spending the money on things like food, well, that's something you can speculate on. But what I will say is that seeing these brazen attacks and the smash and grab flash mob mentality happen around the country should concern you because it's a definite red flag and a call sign to 
a society going down the tubes, all right? And then in the same realm, these brazen carjackings that are happening in places like New York City, where people are stealing multiple cars within a single hour and attacking people at gunpoint and pulling them out of their vehicles and taking what's theirs without any regard to law and order, is what you should expect when this thing keeps going down the spiraling funnel that we're all in together right now. These are the things that people will do when they become so desperate. Now, if you take crime out of the equation, you can also find some of this desperation on your local marketplaces. If you look on things like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Mercari or any of those third-party apps where people are selling their used goods, you can start to see a trend of additional desperation that we haven't seen really before. And maybe um, as a prepper, this isn't the worst time to start buying some used goods because a lot of things are coming up on the market when people suddenly can't make their um, ends meet and they can't pay their bills. They're gonna try to, try to find alternative ways to keep that money flowing. And selling some of your used stuff is a good way to do that. So I would say yes, keep an eye out for some good equipment or secondary items that you can definitely still use in the sense of preparation. But you can also see the desperation being marked on some of these people's um, listings when it comes to what they're trying to sell. And I've seen it and you've seen it too and I can't even understand sometimes the amount of energy or time that would be put into selling something that would only make somebody a dollar or two. But that is exactly how desperate some people are becoming. So I've seen listings where it's like a rusty pair of bolt cutters that's literally on the ground still in the dirt when they took the picture of it and it's listed for three dollars, right? And someone's willing to take the time out of their day to come meet up with someone else trade them these rusty bolt cutters for three dollars so that they can take that three dollars and who knows what maybe go get some ramen noodles maybe go get some food or whatever they got to do that minute that day and this is the behavior that you usually see from people who have addictions right and they go around and they try their best to figure out ways to get more money to feed that addiction um, and this is something you need to keep in mind when it comes to your preparation if people get too desperate, doesn't matter what it's for. If it's for drugs or if it's for food, they're gonna have similar behaviors. So if you're in the rural environment, you already know this, but your tools, your cables in the sense of copper wire, anything that has metallic value, you should probably secure and maybe lock up a little better when it comes to what's in your garden shed or what's outside in your barn or whatever else. In the city, in the urban environment, you gotta understand people are gonna be stealing stuff and reselling it. And a lot of this marketplace stuff you're seeing might be stolen. You also have to understand that your stuff's being targeted. And what we're seeing happening is that people are watching other people's behaviors and following them home and robbing them in their driveway because they followed them all the way from Saks Fifth Avenue and know that they spent three or $400 on goods that day and they wanna take that and turn it into their own money. This is what we're watching happen right now. This is what we're really dealing with. There's a lot of SHTF events that could occur at any point in time, big ones that could change the face of the planet in a second, right? But this is the one that we're most likely to face and that we're most likely going to be dealing with for quite a long time. Even if everything gets solved overnight, the aftermath and the ramifications of the position that people have been put in that has created this desperation doesn't just go away. And this is definitely something I'm concerned about because I'm seeing it happen, not only on the news, but in my own community, as well as when you go to the store, now that I can't afford to buy the things I want every time I go to the grocery store when it comes to basic things like, I don't know, chicken, beef, when I have to choose between different types of meat because of how expensive they've become, I know I'm not the only one, and then I also know that there's people who are in less fortunate positions than I am who are now having to choose between no meat or pasta, right? Or maybe they have to have pasta but no sauce. Or maybe they don't get to buy cheese because it's too expensive, so their sandwiches now are just bread and, and meat. Like these are the things that people are literally having to live through right now. This is basic humanity we're talking about, and it's no longer about anything grandiose or on a huge scale. We're just literally becoming a third world country and we're just watching it happen because there's not a lot you and I can do about it, but prepare for it and understand what it means for us in the sense of our ability to protect ourselves and our ability to have what we need when it no longer becomes accessible. Hopefully this conversation helped you out. And honestly, if you guys are ever looking for ways to support the channel, I always put links down in the description below. Mira Safety is now an affiliate of the channel. They have awesome things like gas masks for children, which is something that we don't think about a lot and something a lot of us don't consider, but having masks for you and your wife or your husband or whoever it is is a good idea but then if your kids don't have a way to protect themselves then like how does that help everybody right so keep those things in mind sometimes we have to think outside the box and remember that 
any protection we offer ourselves, we might need to extend to our kids or to extended family or whoever else might be involved in our group when that time comes. And with what's happening in the world right now with the desperation and the extreme poverty that's spreading throughout the globe, I think relying on community is going to be a big deal. So make sure you have what you need to protect those who are in your inner circle so you can better serve your community and hopefully make those connections now before that time runs out. One thing that'll definitely hurt your ability to survive an SHTF scenario is when you're the only person in the community that nobody knows, when you're the odd man out. That makes you the risk factor. And at that point in time, why should anybody trust you if they have no idea about you? right? And that is something that I would feel the same way about. Why would I let you in my house if you're a stranger? You should think the same way about your community. Why would they let you in their house if you're a stranger? This is just what we need to be working on. Hopefully this gave you some good information. Anything else you need, magicprepper.com. And that's going to be it for Magic Prepper. Yeah,